<laughs> Yay, here we are. Oh my goodness, what an incredible day. What an incredible day. I did a post today about, um, oh gosh, let's see. We can, we can have regrets about the past. We can worry about the future. But if we just stay right here, right here and today and be grateful for what we have. Yes. <laughs> right? And it was like, hey, you know what? You woke up today. Got a roof over your head, got some food, right? Shelter, then all is well in the world. So um, welcome, welcome, welcome to Jugaloom School Live. I have been so busy today, like sharing sharing the uh, announcement about today's show because I feel like it's a really important one. It kind of started with one intention and then it evolved into uh, the ins and outs of making a hat band on a bead loom. And so I really feel like it's important for me to speak to this, especially since we have the gorgeous large wisdom warrior that uh, most people are using for hat band making. And, um, and then we have some hat band kits. And so I thought, uh, hey, you know what, let's kind of massage the title a little and uh, think about uh, actually speaking to you know, some of the questions that I've been getting asked in the recent, probably, gosh, just the last five to seven to 10 days, I've had a couple, couple emails where I thought it was really important to speak to this. So, um, hey, I'm Juliana, the inventor of the Jewel Loom, the portable bead weaving loom. Let's see, where are we right now? Right now, where are we? There she is. There's the original blue Jewel Loom total powerhouse. And you know, back in the day before I had the large wisdom warrior, we were making chokers and long pieces on the original jewel loom. We were just simply sewing them together. So don't feel left out if you're not, you know, if you're not uh, in the market just yet for a large wisdom warrior, you can still do really cool long things on the original blue jewel loom. You just have to sew all of your pieces um, together. So you know, usually, usually there's a fix for these types of things. So I, I want you to, um, to know that you can still do that. So, Hey, Robin, Hey, Maria and Melanie and, uh, Joan Dice is behind the scenes and she's also watching the feed here and Gloria is here and it looks like Zach and Rosalinda, Rosalinda, Viva Las, La, Viva Las Vegas, Mexico. Where did all that come from? <laughs> Oh my God. Give the girl a glass of wine and Jane. So everyone's in, in the house. Everyone's lined up in the hallway. Um, I love that visual when, when we're waiting to go on of just like all of the jewel loom students hanging out in the, uh, jewel loom school hallway, waiting to come into class on the YouTube. So welcome, welcome. And Jenny is here. Jenny got a loom, right? If I, if I read that correctly on, uh, in the jewel loom, Facebook group. I do believe that, correct me if I'm wrong, wrong. I think Jenny's boyfriend, right? Which boyfriend or your husband? <laughs> um, bought her a loom. And so that was really stinking cool for her birthday. So she's a happy camper. Yay. Go girl. Um, what else is going on? So yeah, so I'm going to kind of get right to it because I feel like there's a lot of, um, you know, just yeah, speaking speaking to this whole idea of making a hat band on a loom. So a couple of things that came up. Um, one was from a hat maker. And so in her five-star rating, which y'all, did you know that we have that? So when you buy a product from Jewel Loom, uh, a few days later or so, you'll get an email from a company. It's Judge Me, right? So that's like the program I use. And it'll be asking you for a review. And so we're so incredibly blessed with a lot of really beautiful reviews. And um, I got one from a person, a hat maker, who had talked about a kit and how um, a, a normal size for a hat for a woman's hat was like 22.5. And a man's was like, I think she said 23.5 or 24. Anyway, she makes hats. First of all, how stinking cool is that? Because I'd like to know how to make hats. I think people who make hats and shoes 
I mean, like, that's cool, right? I really think that's thinking cool. Imagine being able to make your own hats and shoes. So um, anyway, I'm just going to kind of be speaking to um, her comment in regards to um, our kits. Okay, so the High Desert hat band kit, the Sedona hat band kit, and then the beaded pattern that comes with your Large Wisdom Warrior kit all make up to a 22 inch long piece for your hat. Okay. We teach how to make that hat band with the concept of this type of a closure. So you can see the hat band. This is the high desert. All right. This is Brandy did this one. She's done all of them. And her style, her technique, and how I learned, right, is that we do this with the leather enclosure. So we've got these leather pieces, and then we've got some suede cord, and then like a barrel bead. And so this helps to basically, you know, take up that extra space that, you know, like if a 22-inch long hat band finished is, is not long enough, then you would be able to finish your hat band and have plenty of room. The other, um, let me just bring this up here. The other style is where we've actually taken and we've put the sliders on the ends and then we use some gorgeous check chain. So this also is a really stick. This could like double as a hat band and a necklace. I don't want to put it on. I'll never get out of it. Um, but, but this is also another way. So, you know, let me just bring that up. That just slid right over, right over the hat. And it just kind of loosely, you know, is acting as a hat band. And so these particular hats I actually bought for the Creative Soul members. I don't know if you all remember that. But I, um, gosh, it's been a couple of years now, but the hat and the hat band a couple years ago for the Creative Soul Group. So we had hat boxes everywhere. I mean, it was just insane. And then to have to take all of those to the post office. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, super fun. So here's the thing. Measure your hat. If you are trying to make a hat band that's going to go end to end, somehow sew it together or attach it to your cowgirl cowboy hat, then yeah, my kits that only do up to 22 inches long are going to be, they're probably going to be short. So, you know, you might need to have an extra couple of tubes to, to make the length that you need. So just remember it's all my kits are based on this type of a closure. Um, and the other one that I just showed you. So, FYI. Okay. So the other little thing that I got, and, and I think this is where I'm going to stand up Joan. So you can just add my overhead <laughs> as I adjust all of my pieces here. Okay. So I'm going to bring in the large wisdom warrior and we're over here to this camera. Awesome sauce. I'm going to try to bring it in as much as I can. So I got an email from Maxi and you might even be watching Maxi because I I gave you the link to tune in. So whether you're watching, um, whether you're watching live or the replay, hey. <laughs> so I wanted to like do a visual for you to better understand um, how I can help you. Okay. So if you look at this example, all right. I think that, um, yeah. Okay. Yes, you can see that. So when I started this particular hat band, I probably came down a little bit more than I normally would. And I want to bring in the sewing tape measure really quick to kind of give you a better, a better understanding here. Okay. So if we take the tape measure and we hold it right here and we go all the way down We've got a good 24 inches that we can bead. So we have plenty of room for our 22 inch long hat band. So that means, hey, we don't have to be so snugged up against this top, right? We can kind of come down a little. And like I just said, I, I came down a lot. I'm not sure what I was thinking, <laughs> 
but it's all going to work out. So even, even with me starting down here, let me put the tape measure and go all the way down. I still can get 22 inches. So Maxie, you were talking about how you started about an inch down and you were worried about whether or not you were going to have room for 22 inches. I would love to, you know, take a photo so I can better understand perhaps to what, what, you know, what it looks like, but I think you should be okay because even with me starting down, what is that? An inch, like 1.75. Okay. I'm still, if I put this right here and again, I go all the way down, I'm still going to, right there is 22 where my thumb is. So you definitely should be okay, especially if you only came down. So if you have a sewing tape measure, okay, if you don't get one, I've got like 20 of them laying around here. I must have collected them from my mom and my grandmom. But um, yeah, so so I think you should be fine. But the gist of it is that the Jewel Loom hat band kits are put together in order to make a 22 inch long hat band. Okay. And so, um, I'm always thinking about quality, right. And the uniqueness of the pattern. And of course the pricing, I mean, when the high desert hat band kit first came out, uh, several years ago, I actually had gone to Tandy and bought hides leather hides and we were cutting them and we were putting them in the kits well as you can imagine and suede i mean it was expensive then <laughs> and now it's like super expensive so i'm also thinking about pricing you know and i want to get you i want you to weave you know there's nothing more that just warms my heart. I want you to weave. And so I really do work hard to get my pricing correct. Um, so yeah, so the hat bands make up to 22 inches long. If you need more than that, then you might, you might need some more tubes of, of seed beads. So I hope that helps um, both of the hat band questions that came in front of me. I think the hat bands are just so incredibly awesome. And you know what? With the Sedona kit, so I also want to point out, if you're just like, girl, hat bands are super rad, but I don't do a hat. <laughs> I don't make, you know, I'm not into the hat bands. That's okay, because you can still, like I did, look, I made a bracelet. So this is the Sedona kit. I made a bracelet. I'm totally going to whip out some earrings and I could probably do a ring because if you think about 22 inches minus what, like say up to eight inches for a bracelet and then some cute little earrings, even if you did two and two, so four plus eight is 12. And then you do a ring, which maybe might be another three. That's nine, 10, 11. You got a lot. You got a lot. So if you're not into the hat bands, but you love the pattern, you can still get the kit and then do bracelets, earrings, a pendant, ring. You could do a bunch of small things. So hopefully that helps. Um, again, just wanted to really speak about the ins and outs of, you know, creating a hat band on the Large Wisdom Warrior, where our concept, where our design, where our intention is coming from, especially when it's, um, you know, when it's about the sizing and everything, you know, like if you take this hat, so my girlfriend, Jackie bought me this hat and I just did a bunch of reels with this, right? It's super rad. Look at that. And it's going to be so great with the Sedona kit. Um, and so, you know, I, let's just face it, girls and guys, I got a lot of hair. I got a big head. So this fits my, my big jewel head very, very well. Um, earlier, let's see, I did measure what were we at? It was, I think it was like 23. So I'll just take that sewing measure tape. And yeah, this guy's almost like 24. So if I do the 22 inches and then I do the closure, like I showed you on the high desert, it's going to be fine. 
It's going to be fine. It's going to work out just great. So anyway, super cool. Thank you, Jackie, for my hat. I love it. I can't wait to get started with actually, you know, making my Sedona hat band. So, okay, I'm going to put this to the side. So hold on one second. And we're going to go down to the table. So yeah, fringe earrings. Yeah, right on. Right on, Maria. That's right up your alley, babe. I love that. So, oh, so I do just want to say, too, that I felt, you know, kind of bummed when the pricing on the hides and the leather and the, you know, and the suede and everything went up. And and I really wanted to give you something. So what you will find is faux leather. It's faux. It's not exciting. <laughs> it's just not. But you know what? There are people who actually don't like to work with the leather for personal reasons. So it does work for them. And at least it is something, right? So even if you wanted to practice with the faux leather and then invest in some real leather, I, I'm actually going to next week, I'm going to take a drive downtown. Um, I'm lucky enough that uh, I have a Tandy um, locally. And I'm going to go for giggles and just kind of see what the hides are <laughs> and, and, you know, what's happening in this, this day as far as pricing. But for now, there is at least a piece of the faux. I do include a little barrel, a little barrel bead. Um, it doesn't have cord and I don't list in the product description that it comes with any, anything like this because I, I'm just giving it to you. Right. So anyway, that's that story. And we'll see what um, what the leather and all that good groovy stuff is selling for when I go downtown next week. So, all right. Um, in this moment, I think I need to bring you over. So, Joan, I don't know if you want to bring up the other camera, too. I'm going to scooch this one over. And I'm going to bring it down. Okay, I'm going to get the door because you know who's scratching at the door. Come on, Bubba. Come on. <clears throat> You're going to have to wait. I know. Go lay down. I know. What? Mommy can't cook for you right now. It's like having a child. It's seriously like having a child. He has really high quality, like dry kibble in his bowl right now. No, no. He wants me to come in and cook the organic hamburger meat and um, the carrots and the broccoli and the white rice. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm like, you're going to have to wait. So I'm actually um, going to sit with my large wisdom warrior. As you could see earlier, it was in... Um, it's stand, which I totally love, but I have to like manipulate the table and bring it down. And it's just a little too much construction during a live. So, um, yeah, here's a close up, close up of the bracelet and the gorgeous. It's really, really pretty. So I, I actually was asking, oh, Deb, anyway, I'm, my throat's dry. Hold on. And don't freak out because I'm drinking from the plastic. I never do that. <laughs> I just didn't have time to get, get my cup all together. Okay. All right. So where was I going to say? Um, I, asked Bra <laughs> I asked Brandy last night. I said, so what's the story behind the Sedona bracelet? And she's so funny. I mean, when I tell you she's a rock star and she writes songs and she sings like Stevie Nicks. I'm not even exaggerating. I will have to share the link to like some of her music because I mean, really in essence, that is the story, right? So you have like this really cool chick, okay, who like is such a rock star, you know, uh, plays the guitar, just played in a big, huge event in Prescott, Arizona, um, can belt 
and and she just she sings like an angel and so really that is the story that is the story because she makes these patterns for us she's a silversmith she's a beater she's a singer songwriter artist um and so it's kind of funny because when i said well what's the story behind the sedona you know hat band and 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 we you know it wasn't like this clear romanticized verbiage that she gave back to me and and really i just realized you know what the story is her the story is her we're so lucky that we have this incredible talent who's like taking her time to make these patterns for us and so i don't know you will love i'm going to post one of her her videos where she's singing and and you'll get what i'm saying that's the story behind all of the hat bands from jewel loom and brandy and myself so Anyway, my little soapbox. Okay, so as you can tell, um, I already have the loom warped and I've already talked about how I got started, okay? Um, there is a step-by-step -step course that Trisha um, did for us a while back. And my intentions are to get that uploaded. Um, I do need to find a better situation to upload from because I'm so close to the military base. Uploading is next to impossible. So <laughs> I actually had, I actually like put a APB out today for, you know, who's got Wi-Fi in the 805. And then I forget how big my county is, right? It's not like Los Angeles or anything. <laughs> but I got a friend like on the other side, he's like, you can come to Santa Paula and upload. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so funny. Like I literally would have to like drive 45 minutes just to go upload something. But I will do that for you all because, um, because I want to and I know it's needed. And so anyway, so we're just going to do a little beat along today. Um, and then I will definitely be uploading the entire Sedona hat course, which Trisha really knocked it out of the park. She did some really fun things. Um, originally, it was in a kit. So there are some components that she used that really added a beautiful touch to the hats. So, hey, Claire. Ah, Kanita. All right. So let's see, Joan, where am I going to? Let me, I don't want to roll over Marlon Brando. So. I think I'll get this out of the way and I think I'll do this and then let's see. Uh-oh. What happened? Hold that thought. I don't know what just happened. Why am I getting <laughs> just for you? what how did this come up did we just lose total oh my gosh what is happening this is like the second time now the military base doesn't want her to use her wi-fi it's so hey there's been f-14s flying over like and i'm i used to work at let me just tell you have i ever told you this story while my while my iPhone comes back up, um, I used to work at Point Magoo Air Force Base, not Air Force, Airedale Base. Okay, and and that's not far from me. So when I was seventeen years old, just yesterday, nah, not just yesterday, a long time ago, <laughs> plus forty, right? Um, when I there we go. When I, I got it. We got it. Um, okay. So mute, and I don't know what this is. Okay. So when I was seventeen, I got an opportunity to work at the Point Magoo base, where all the fighter jets and the Blue Angels. And the opportunity was at the chow hall, at the mess hall, at the galley. I was a galley girl. And I remember asking my parents, telling them, and they were like, 
you can work out there, but you are not allowed to date any of those sailors. And I'm like, I'm not going to date a sailor. <laughs> That's a whole other YouTube. Uh, <laughs> let me just tell you, it was the most fun I ever had in my whole entire life. Like the best job. But anyway, so when the fighter fighters, you know, when the F-14s and stuff fly over, I'm like crazy. I'm like running outside screaming America. I don't know. I'm, I'm out of my mind. Okay. <laughs> so I've already got like a lot of wildfire, probably too much. I'm a little overzealous sometimes on my jewel loom needle. By the way, I use my jewel loom needles all the time for everything because my hands just cannot hold a smaller <laughs> needle. So um, I'm just going to come in. Hopefully you can see this. I don't know, Joan, if you want to reverse that or um, take me off. Also, I think I'm going to have to plug in the lights. Okay. Oh, and then I guess it would help if I actually turn the light on. There we go. Awesome sauce. Okay, so I'm just going to take the needle. Let me back up a little bit here. And I'm just coming in. So here's the last row I was working on. I'm coming up one more. I'm hoping I can get through here. It might be hard. I know, buddy. Oh, my God. I wish you could hear all of his little... He's talking 90 miles an hour. He's so over me right now. Oh my gosh, please don't get stuck. Okay. So I never pull my needle when it gets um, tight like that with my hand. I use the flat nose pliers because it really distributes <clears throat> um, just, I guess, like the, the tension or what have you. So yeah, I had the best time working out at... Um, at the base. So we would sneak out to like these sailor parties on the weekend. Don't tell anybody. And so we would be like, I don't even know if we were 18. <laughs> we were seniors in high school. Brandy was with me. This is how far back Brandy and I have been friends. So, so we were like seniors in high school and we'd get invited to these parties out in town, you know, all girlfriends, let me tell you. So much fun. Those were the days. Lots of lots of great music and dancing, you know, just partying and having a great time. We were all safe, of course, but, you know, our parents would not have been too pleased. <laughs> okay, so let's see where I'm at. I'm going to come under the warps and I've got to pull my sleeves up here. And um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so I'm on the 10th row. Yeah, you can make um, make a bracelet or earrings, Maria. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to open up my pattern. Um, the pattern obviously is a part of the... Um, the paid kit. And let's see, B is mauve. So, and then four A's. One, two, three, four. So, you know what? Um, while I'm doing this, I, I do believe that there's an update on Jackie and Shadow. Are you up for sharing that, Joan? <laughs> I haven't looked lately. <laughs> oh, you have, they had some babies. I know the first one. I heard the first one. So do they have two? I think I know that there were two. I, I saw a third one, but gosh darn, it looked really tiny. I can look really quick. Okay. Okay. So for those of you that weren't with us last week, um, we had a lot of fun beating and Joan ended up narrating the beautiful story of Jackie and Shadow, the um, eagles that have been 
sitting. Um, oh, do you want to take me off, Joan? <clears throat> that have been sitting uh, on these three eggs for quite some time now. And, um, and it was just such a beautiful combination of beading and listening to this beautiful story of these very majestic, um, gorgeous eagles, you know, how, uh, you know, the male was just so unbelievably protective and helpful and, um, you know, just, and, and then correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe they said something about, uh, the female sitting on the eggs for, what was it? 62 hours or something during the snowstorm. And so it's, I don't know. Wildlife is just so fascinating, right? I don't know if we can get any closer here. There we go. So, yeah, so it's just really, um, really a cool story about these eagles and their eggs. So I'm going to bring this up to the camera because I feel like, you know, you could almost do maybe two of these for a pair of earrings. And then my guess is that it would be like three of those for an average size ring, but I'm not 100% sure. I put my patterns in notebook page protectors and use dry erase markers to cross off line. I love that. That's really good. I'm always going by the seat of my pants. <laughs> but I love everybody's everybody's uh, better way because, yeah. All right. So we're going to, um, we got a shamrock and we got a peach cobbler. And this gorgeous color here. I love this color right here, this pumpkin. It's so pretty. <clears throat> Oh, I guess you're not really seeing. I guess that's not too much of a deal breaker that you don't see me picking up all the beads, but. Oops. Um, just a minute. I just got an update. Just a minute. Um, Do you have to have me on or can it just be you? I'm trying. I, oh, okay. <laughs> I can't. I mean, let me, I was trying to get myself off and too. Oh, well, let me give you the update. Okay. Reason I haven't been hearing anything is none of the eggs hatched. It doesn't look like they're going to. Wait, I, I swear I just saw a TikTok that showed that they hatched. I just saw, read a news report about that was made this afternoon. What? So, Why I mean, because I was it? going through my Facebook pages and nobody was saying anything. And so uh, then I finally just went to YouTube and did a search. Oh my and I found God. that news report. That's why I wasn't seeing anything to know anything. They, they, I just feel so sorry for that nest. They're just having the hardest time. Aww. And there's another one in the Channel Islands. I just love yeah. that mom so much because, because there's still DDT. I know that's what's causing it in the water, and it makes the eggshell soft. And um, there was one year she went laid eight eggs, four different batches of two, and they all kept breaking, and you could just hear her crying. Every oh time one broke, God. it was so sorrowful. And finally, then the next year she had three and oh my God, they spoiled those babies to death. And then the next year they only had one. And that thing was the biggest roly poly you ever seen. <laughs> it to death. And they haven't had another one. It's, well, no, they moved their nest, but then the next year they didn't have it because the, the eggs were breaking again. Oh man. So, Yeah. So, oh, nature. Yeah. What is the stuff that you said is in the water? It's still some DDT out there, you know, from years ago. That's what most of these um, birds years ago, you know, they're using DDT on crops and everything to kill. Oh, yeah. The, and it got in the water. And that's what did, killed a lot of the birds, not just eagles, but 
a lot of birds of prey and um, other birds and stuff. And that's why, you know, you may not set, you may say, well, I've never seen an eagle. And all of a sudden you're seeing eagles. They're making a big comeback now over the uh, last 20 years where we weren't yeah. seeing them. Like at least when you and I were growing up, you know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's really fascinating. Yeah. We have had definitely some, some, um, natural disasters, you know, like, you know, we've had the big oil spills and, you know, things like that, that have caused a lot of destruction. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to get myself in trouble here. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't lift my on air, uh, <laughs> pattern because it could be screwed up. That's for sure. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, thank you for that. I, I am bummed that people, you know, the, the bad thing about AI is that people are using it to literally create false things. And so what a shame because I literally saw, you know, this post with the, with that was claiming to be the two Eagles with three um, hatched um, eggs. I know what nest that is. I saw it today. It's oh, in the so Channel Islands. I, that's why I popped back on. It's um, Thunder and Akachita's nest. And I can't remember the name of the nest right now, but it's on one of the islands. It's oh, like a so cliff. It's on like a cliff on an island. Okay. So there actually is a successful there's, situation. There's two or three on the Channel Islands that are successful. Okay. Oh so in that one, you know, that one, I know the long history of that nest and it's pretty cool. Okay. So, uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to go into it. <laughs> Well, why not? <laughs> it's just so, well, I know that originally, you know, there's, I'm you trying can to just, remember. Can you, can you just do you and me beating? No, because I would have to take you off the only way we could do it. Let me, wait, I know last, what I'll do. Last we'll talk in the were, background. We'll talk yeah, in the there background. You go. Okay. Yeah. I'm not thinking clearly. Hey. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, on the, on this island, um, nest i mean it goes back to where they were um you know how i mentioned that they populated the islands through the um through um using the san francisco zoo oh um, yeah okay yeah and, they, and then they moved the eaglets out there and after you know they were it was time for them to leave their parents and things so because when um eaglets are after they start flying they're called fledglings they will come back to within like 35, most of them, not all of them, will come back to within 35 miles of the nest they hatched in. But oh. in the case of like at the, since they hatched in a zoo, they will come back within 35 miles of where they probably started flying. Because that's oh. where they were looking and get in imprinting the area, you know, to learn wow. it. And, um, well, there was, um, I think her name was Faye. She had another mate, but I can't, there wasn't much history there, but she lost her mate and she got another mate and they called him Superman. <laughs> there's a, here's why, because uh -oh. when she was in the hack tower, you know, when they're in printing the area, she was in with another, e you know, female eaglet and, you know, they probably thought they were sisters. Well, that female never got, you know, by the time they mature, she couldn't find a mate. And so she joined their nest. <laughs> oh my God. So, so, so um, um, Superman, that's probably why they named him Superman, was taking care of both of them. And they both actually oh laid eggs, God. but not necessarily did they all hatch, you know. Oh. And they knew both of them were laying eggs because one time when they went up there to check, there was, you know, they call where they lay their eggs, they call them egg bowls. Oh. Okay. You know, and that's, there was a second egg bowl with one egg in it. So they figured one female was laying on it and the other one had to hurry up and lay the egg. So she created another egg bowl real fast. I'm, I'm telling you, these they're very, very smart, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, just listening to your stories and I, I mean, how, you know, what they know to do is just like mind boggling. And that, that I guess by what I heard, you know, cause I wasn't watching it back then that uh, I guess Superman wasn't very happy about having to care for both females and these, like, all these babies and stuff. And oh finally, um, Faith, you know, so-called sister, um, found another mate and left. Oh. And um, and then, like, 
soon after, I guess it was in 2017 or 2018, something happened to Faye. And that's when Thunder came in. No, Thunder was already there. Never mind. Oh so somewhere around the mid 20s. So um, Thunder came in and they really had a very successful nest. I mean, that was one that was a fun one to watch because they're kind of crazy and stuff. Oh and then God. something happened to Superman and she, uh -oh. a four year old, they're not fully mature till five. So like the four year olds oh. usually act Yeah, you know, once in a while you get a good four year old, but if they're male, they usually act like, uh, you know, um, excuse my language, horny teenagers. Okay. <laughs> so they're not fully responsible, you know? Oh my God. And so that was not a successful year, but after that, it's just like everything kicked in the next year and they've been having a real, uh, really good luck. And that's Akachita. Everybody kept thinking Akachita wouldn't, I guess that's how you pronounce his name, wouldn't be very good father, but I just knew he had a, um, once his hormones kicked in, he would, and he's been an excellent father. Wow. So incredible that they're so intuitive like that. I, I just wouldn't have ever in a million years thought that the Eagles were, um, you know, I mean, just what you have explained from last week to, to now, it's, it's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I only learned about Superman because I was so fascinated. You know, like I said, that my favorite nest to learn about is the um, trio nest with which two adults, you know, yeah, there are three adults. And um, so I had a friend the first year I started watching Eagles, you know, we but we made a Facebook page for just the two of us. And we we're, you know, anything Aww. we can get our hands on. We were both are studying a lot about trio nests. And I still have that page, you know, so I could go back. Do and you? It. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Do you nurture that page at all? Like, do people go and. No, it's just mine and hers. It's a very private page. We were gotcha. the only two on it. So that way we could say, she said I could add more people to it, but um, she got sick and I had not been able to find out anything that happened to her. She lived out there in California too. Okay. And um, so, I, I mean, I wrote, called and everything, but I don't know. I think something happened to her, which makes me Aww. sad every time I think about it because she was so awesome. Aww. So, okay. <laughs> Rosalinda thinks that uh, the ones I'm referring to could be in Big Bear. Do you know who Big that Bear? Is? Big Bear is Jackie and Shadow. Oh, and that's the one I said I just saw the news report because it was only about a minute long. I listened to it really quick. Okay, to see what they said. Okay, okay, very interesting. Yeah, it, uh, it, it surprises me that not even one hatched. But Rosalinda, you're saying that you. Rosalinda, are you did the did they hatch in Big Bear or not? Because I did see a news report today about Akachita and um Thunder that their three eggs hatched. That's why I was thinking you, that was the news report. You, you that's what you heard, Jules. Okay. Okay. I yeah, I don't know. I can't now I can't keep my birds straight. I mean, come on. Last <laughs> week I was this was not a part of my life, and now I'm trying I'm trying to keep the birds straight. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did this happen? David says, love how you can count beads and talk birds at the same time. True beaters I, are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it if it was me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what, what I don't know what's gonna happen if this is gonna turn out. <laughs> I'm not gonna show anyone. <laughs> <laughs> So I just saying this for, for beginners, since my voice is on, um, yeah. Jules is actually following a pattern to the left and it's showing her the colors to pick up in order. Yeah. So if she reads the pattern from left and right to right and she's working from the loom, moving her needle underneath that's left to right, you know? Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, speaking of the fighter jets, here they come. <gasps> I hear them. Oh my God. Did you guys hear that? I did, but I have an earphone in. Usually I can uh, hear better. Okay. So the fighter jets just went over the, that's so funny. Yeah. Oh my gosh. During the air show. I mean, we didn't even have to go to the base because when they ended their, 
well, when they were practicing, they were practicing right over my mom's house. I mean, it was phenomenal. David says he could hear him. I um, one year we were in um, Jacksonville, Florida, and they're getting ready to have an um, air show, and the um, you know Blue Angels were there. Yeah. Where they were practicing the day before, and we happened to be on the beach, and you know the air um, um, Air Force Base is right ne near, you know, really close to the beach, if not next to it. And so yeah. we were able to see the whole thing that day when it wasn't crowded. Oh my goodness, <laughs> yeah, it was that's twice a year. I mean. <laughs> I was just tripping out. I was like, you've got to be kidding me right now. They were just like <laughs> totally, totally bringing it right over Wainimi. Like people didn't even, you know, we were just all like, just so stoked. It was really neat. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I always so thought, I mean, we had a small Air Force base, right? Patterson in Indiana. I always thought it was just so cool to drive by it. Yeah, we have two. So we have um, we have a CB base. That's the one that I'm butt up to. And then we have the Point Magoo. And then Vandenberg that launches all the um, shuttles, you know, space um, SpaceX. Oh, yeah. We watch some of yeah. those whenever we catch it on. We watch YouTube at night instead of television. Yeah. Just whatever okay. comes up. And they do a lot of those, um, yeah. you know, that well, comes up live. So Vandenberg Air Force Base is about... Um, about two and a half hours, but we get the boom. Ooh. Yeah, we get the boom. And so um, it's pretty cool. A couple of years ago, we were, you know, when well, my brother in law lives in Jacksonville. So we were down there, and Doug and I was at the beach, and we were watching an Osprey and, uh, you know, offshore fishing and everything. And, yeah. and then this lady come up, and did she, she, um, she goes, did you see that? And I said, yeah, it's pretty fun watching the Osprey. She goes, no, I meant the, oh. <laughs> I meant this rocket shooting off. Oh, I was no. always wanting to see that. I was so disappointed. Oh no. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so funny. <laughs> and by the time she said it, it got behind the clouds so we couldn't yeah. see anything. <laughs> yeah it's pretty cool when it happens like there are some launches you know from vandenberg that you can you can see quite a bit wow yeah so it's kind of cool i mean i grew up with you know grew up with the military bases so i'm an army brat my dad retired when i was six oh. that's when we ended up in indiana yeah okay so. yeah he oh was God. actually, he was working at the Pentagon when he met my mom and she's working at the U.S. Treasury in Washington, D.C. Yeah. That's so cool. And, you know, I didn't even know it until after he died and my sister said something and everybody goes, I, I can't believe you're, you're, you didn't know that, Joan. Uh, when, you know, three of my brothers was in the army and when one of them retired, I mean, was, uh, went through um, basic training at Fort Knox. Uh huh. You know, and that was only a few hours from our house. So we all drove down. My sister and one of my brothers went down with my mom and dad, and they went to the museum. And dad goes, well, there's my Jeep. Your Jeep? And they go, they go, what? He was the driver for um, uh, MacArthur during the Korean War. What? Are you yeah. kidding that was your dad did that? Man. Yeah. So that's why he was at the Pentagon before that. Because, yeah. you know, they met before he went to Korea. That's so, wow. You know, I just never thought about what he was doing. At, you know, I was young. Yeah. I didn't know. And I didn't think anything yeah. of it. What was he doing yeah. at the Pentagon? Oh, just driving the big guy around. <laughs> that's all. I guess I didn't realize how big the, you know, how important the Pentagon was. I just figured everybody ended oh. up there one time or another. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. But you know, he, like a lot of veterans didn't talk about war either. And that's no. why we didn't know. Right. Cause exactly. he would have still had nightmares and stuff. Well, I, if I had to wake him up, I'd rather use a oh. um, broom cause he'd come up swinging, Aww. you know, because after, you know, whoever it was took over from uh, MacArthur, he ended up stationed all by himself somewhere in Korea. Wow. So he didn't know who the enemy was. God, that is crazy. You should yeah, I have journaled all of this. And <laughs> well, it's just pieces all over the end. Most of what I know is from what mom told me, you know, because they were engaged when he was in Korea. Wow. 
<clears throat> very fascinating. Yeah. Very fascinating. Yeah. I don't know what my, I don't know. I just, when I got my job 17 years old working out at the base, I mean, you know, it was just a party. Like I can't even begin, <laughs> you know, we were, <laughs> we were going to the enlisted men's club every, you know, oh my gosh. So, oh many. my gosh. Oh, I used yeah. to love going to the army base just to look at guys in uniform. I just thought oh, that was yeah. not the sexiest sucker. thing, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, in my twenties. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm a big sucker for a man in a uniform. <laughs> Me too. That is just that is the hottest thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, officer and a gentleman was out when, when, you know, uh, when I was working out at the base. So, you know, you was a little, like you were a little mesmerized by, by all of that. <clears throat> it's too fun. Too, too fun. But we would have these parties. So, um, all the people that, um, the chefs and everything, they were all Filipino. And we would have these big, huge parties. Uh, we would rent uh, the beach house on the base. There were like these beach bungalows. And um, and so we would have toga parties and we would have wear funky socks, you know, to the party or, you know, just all these different themed. And then all the F Filipino um, cooks and chefs and what have you, they would make all the food. So we were eating lumpia and, you know, all of the good Filipino food. Like, I don't know if you've had a chance to enjoy Filipino food. I've never but had it, is, it. It's amazing. And I mean, Filipinos know how to like really bring it. <laughs> we have a very big, well, we're in a very diverse community here in Oxnard. We have like, you know, ask Rosalinda. Rosalinda is very familiar with the Nard. And uh, we've got a Hispanic culture with just outstanding Mexican food. We've got you know, a big Filipino community, but yeah, lumpia and all of the other um, wonderful things. It's just super, super yummy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Fun stuff. I like food. <laughs> <laughs> I like food. <laughs> just ask my belly. Uh, I, I've lived a sheltered life. I haven't had much variety. Really? Uh-uh. Oh, girlfriend. <laughs> can't you get into i mean i would does nashville have any diversified type of offerings for food well nashville's like two and a half hours from here i'm not gonna go there just for dinner are you serious <laughs> see i would <laughs> there's a variety around here i mean not a huge variety but there is some and there's probably even more in knoxville but i'm not sure you know yeah, i just never sought them out yeah i feel like knoxville has um has a nice selection of of things just from my trips and stuff so you know there's a candy store near jtv a candy store candy oh tandy i thought of that yeah because I, I went there a couple them. times yeah well that's where i um i go to get my hides and i was going there um and so yeah yeah, I, I think Ginger and I checked it out, but it yeah. wasn't anything we really wanted to pay that price for. You know, we don't. It, want it's big expensive. Things or, yeah. It's very expensive, and I I did it for the Creative Soul community. Everybody got leather. Everybody got real suede. You know, those kits were really, really, um, really nice. So I'm going to do one more row here. So I'm. Um, you could see like. <laughs> goes together pretty quick even when you're when you're talking i gotta count the a's one two three four five six seven eight nine nine a's one, maybe i need somebody to start coming over to my house and chatting while i'm doing my hat band <laughs> four five, <laughs> five six seven did i say eight or nine I think I said nine. Oh my goodness. What does he say? I have a son living in Trafalgar. Where? Trafalgar. Where is that, Dave? Camp Atterbury. 
But he's uh, in Trafalgar. So obviously it's in like Indiana. Camp Atterbury sounds like something in Indiana because it's been um since I lived in Indiana, I moved from there in 1999. So <laughs> forgetting <okay>. places. <laughs> I'm so stoked to go to Yeah, New Indiana. It's in Indiana. Indiana. Okay. So I'm gonna um I need a pencil. Where no, do I got anything? I got nothing. All right, I'm just gonna scooch this over. And I'm going to bring this up to the camera really quick. It's such a beautiful, I mean, it's going to look, hold on. Where's it at? Oh, I moved it to across the table. Oh, isn't that beautiful? You it's know, the really colors beautiful. look different when you loom them yeah. on there than it does when it's laying on the mat. Yeah. It, it just, they take on a totally different shade. Well, do you remember? Yeah. Well, I can't help but think too, like I bet, um, I bet if I were to use pink wildfire for my wefts instead of the green, I bet the pink going through these colors would also be pretty phenomenal. Oh, I bet it would be too. Yeah, because like when we did the friendship hearts last week, the red going through the beads, the transparent beads just made that bracelet look so Gen X vintage. But if you were to run white through those beads, it would look very different, you know, like a real clean, clean look. So um, anyway, all right, let me readjust here really quick. Okay, if you want to bring... Bring me on up. <laughs> wow. So I did a whole thing without like screwing it up. I'm so proud of myself. I'm so proud of myself. I might, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of wondering. I might, when I run out of green wildfire, I might, um, I might try the pink for giggles because it's mine. And so, you know, I don't care if it's like different just to see but I kind of am wondering like on some of the iridescent translucent type colors like the um, glazier and the cobbler that pink running through it might be very interesting very cool so yay ah oh. so I want, am I going to keep working on this tonight I really should I have another hat band that we designed oh my gosh I can't even wait to show you guys, but that's May. <laughs> that is May. So Lori says, I can't wait to see your earrings, Maria. Yeah, I can't wait to wear my Maria earrings next weekend when I go to the show. You know, I'm going to be rocking those, girlfriend. I'm going to be like with my hat and my earrings. Um, how many columns? I think it's 11 or 13 over. What is it? 13. Yeah. So it's wide. It's wide. It's wider than some, some that we've done, but anyway, I hope that, um, the ins and outs that we referred to at the beginning of the video helped you if you were in any way, you know, trying to figure out things, um, as far as, you know, the length and, Again, your kits that you get from us are going to um, make up to 22 inches. So if you if you definitely have to have something longer than that, uh, you might want to just keep that in mind. So, um, but but if you use the closure techniques that I showed you in the beginning, then you really should be just fine because um, because it'll make ultimately a very big piece. So, hey Carmen, Jersey's in the house. Hello, hello. Oh, I totally just about almost forgot to tell you. Oh, and I didn't even tell Joan. So I did an automatic discount on the six patterns right now that are in the shop. So the Sedona pattern, the high desert pattern, the friendship pattern, goddess friendship, high desert, Sedona beaded pattern chevron <laughs> so 
So you don't have to worry about a code or anything. Um, you will automatically get 10% off of those kits. And that's going to be good till Saturday, since we've got a lot of people that watch the replay. Okay. And so that is, again, just automatically a 10% is going to come off of if you put one of those in the cart. And then I don't know if it shows up like when you put it in the cart or it shows up when you go to checkout. But that's my story. I'm sticking to it. So, okay. Um, five o'clock. Wow. That was thick and juicy. We had eagles and we had F-14s and we had beating and um, stories about all kinds of things. <laughs> I love it. I love story time. I really do love story time. So we're going to have to figure out how we can incorporate a, a little bit of story. Oh, and I'm totally going to post. I'll post it, in the, post it in the Facebook group. I'll give you a link to one of Brandy's, um, one of her, her singing adventures. So she can serenade you. Let's just put it this way. She sings landslide and I cry like a baby every time, every, every time. <laughs> oh yes. And, and men in uniforms. That's right. <laughs> I'm not going to say what I want to say. <laughs> I'm just going to, I want to keep my YouTube channel. So I'm just going to, with that, I love our military men and women. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah. Okay. <laughs> and thank you, David, to your son for serving. God bless him. And give your bride a big hug. I miss her. So we need to get her, we need to get her um, beautiful face on here. She's a phenomenal artist herself. So both her and David. All right, everyone. Thank you for um, taking time to hang out. And um, again, hey, if you're not subscribed, I would just cyber yummy kisses for your, your subscription and your likes and even more so your, your shares. That really, really, really helps us. And, um, and yeah. And so we appreciate you so very much. And we will be back next Thursday. And then I leave for NAMTA on Saturday. And I am going to have, obviously, a lot of footage. I'll be in and out randomly lives, showing you products and showing you things. John Bede's going to be there. There's going to be a ton of art, artsy people, you know, like, paints and markers and brushes. And I can't wait for all of that. And Hemptique is going to be there. And so we're just going to have like a lot of fun. I'm going to really hopefully get a lot of footage and, and um, you'll get to meet a lot of the designers on the other side of creativity. So that's always fun and cool, but Hey, Brenda, I will watch a replay just done with work. Okay. Long day, honey. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, I'm going to go and cook the prince his meal, his organic hamburger, broccoli, and carrots with a little white rice. Oh, and he likes ghee. Yeah. You know how much ghee is right now? Like for like that size, it's like $14. $14. <laughs> Buy kits. Buy bead kits. I got to feed the dog. <laughs> All right. I love you guys. Have a beautifully blessed evening and weekend, and I will see you again.